So this is your basic monopoly diagram. Now, if industry was competitive, the price would be PC quantity QC. But a monopoly has market power. It can set whatever price it wants to. And the profit maximizing price will be at price PM quantity QM. And that's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Now let's look at how to draw this diagram from scratch. So let's just assume that this is the demand curve of a whole industry. We'll draw a marginal cost curve, which looks something like this. And we're also going to draw an average cost curve. And let us assume that this industry, for, to start off with, is competitive. And if it's competitive, then we'll have that output and that price. Why? Well, because here, average revenue equals average cost. And that is normal profit. But let us assume that this industry gets taken over by a monopoly. So the industry is basically the same as a firm. And the question is, where does a monopoly then maximize profit? Well, to maximize profit, we need to know the marginal revenue curve. And so that is our marginal revenue curve. Now, the next question is, where does the firm maximize profits? Where's where MR equals MC, which will be at this quantity Q2. And the thing is, if they want to sell Q2, what price do they charge? Well, they charge a higher price, P2 up here. So a monopoly sets a high price, restricts output, which is kind of what we would expect. Now, another question we can ask is, how much profit does a firm make? Well, profit is average revenue minus average cost times quantity. So the average revenue they're getting is here, and the average cost in this diagram is there. So super normal profit is this rectangle here. The difference between also, AR we can show the area of AC. dead weight welfare loss. Dead weight welfare loss is the combined decline in consumer and producer surplus. So by producing less, setting a higher price, there's this decline in consumer surplus, which is not captured by the monopoly. There's also this decline in the producer surplus, which is not captured by the monopoly. So because a monopoly sets a high price, restricts output, this area is lost to society. So that is a a rough diagram. Let's have a look at a slightly neater one, had more time to prepare. And from this diagram, we can learn quite a few things about the efficiency of a market. Firstly, with regard to allocative efficiency, a monopoly is inefficient because a price, PM, is significantly greater than the marginal cost. There is underconsumption. Society is not benefiting from the full value that you could have in a competitive market. Secondly, it is productively inefficient, because it's not quite the lowest point on the AC curve, hardly visible on this particular diagram, but to be fully productively efficient would be at point C. Also, what this diagram doesn't show is other things. For example, a monopoly may benefit from huge economies of scale, producing at the lowest point on the long run average cost curve, and this might outweigh some of these inefficiencies here. On the other hand, a monopoly may be X inefficient, with lack of competitive pressure, no incentive to cut costs. Over time, another benefit potentially of a monopoly is that with large supernormal profits, it can afford to invest in research and development and develop new products. And this is going to be important for uh, industries like, say, pharmaceuticals, where drug development is very important. 